Hey guys, so you remember all that sleeper simulant stuff you did to get to the end of part one? Well, looks like we didn't need to wait as long as we thought we needed to because part two is already here and things wrap up pretty quickly. If you've completed all of part one and turned in your item to the gunsmith, then you should, in theory, get the next part of the quest on the next daily reset. Anyway, head to the tower and talk to the gunsmith and he will send you to a special version of the Fallen Saber Strike, which is light 280 and has the epic modifier. The strike does have matchmaking as well. Go do that version of the strike to get the sleeper simulant weapon frame it drops from the final boss. Then head back to the gunsmith and that's it. You're done. Just like that. Pretty, uh, pretty unexpected and pretty anticlimactic, if I say so myself. I was not expecting this part of the quest to, one, be ready so quickly, and two, to end so quickly. Was definitely expecting to do some stuff with the weapon frame, maybe get some more components or whatever, but, uh, nope. Just done, after that. I don't really have a problem with it being 290. The hardest thing in the entire chain was easily the strike, and that was only 280 light, so I wasn't really expecting this to turn up as a 310 or anything like that. I'm not sure if we the community hyped it up too much, or maybe the Game Informer article did, I don't know. I think it would have been cool to have something span across a couple of months with regards to a quest like this, even if it was time-gated. So, moving on from all of that, how does it perform? Well, right out of the box at 290, expect to get around 14,000 damage per body hit and 17,000 damage per headshot on ultras. It crit for about 21,000 and change with shadow shot applied. The fusion rifle ammo bonus on a piece of armor did not give me more than 7 shots, so I assume 7 shots is the most you can hold. Obviously, the immediate comparison is going to be to a rocket launcher, so I tried to do a quick test to see how the weapons stacked up. The rocket I ended up using was my 300 attack vertigo. I also have a couple of reload speed bonuses, so this thing reloads very fast, and I have 5 rockets as opposed to 4 because of ammo bonuses. Let's do some quick and lazy number crunching, and here are the results. Sleeper Simulant doing 13,872 damage per shot to the body, 17,310 to the head at 290 attack. Takes about 15 seconds to fire off 7 shots with no reload speed bonuses, so 7 shots multiplied by the damage per shot divided by the amount of time to shoot those shots, and we end up with a range of about 6,500 to 8,000 damage per second for single target damage depending on crits. It's 97,107 to 121,170 damage in 15 seconds. Once again, this is only the 290 attack version, and this damage was done on some Taken Champion Ultras. My rocket launcher, the Vertigo, did 12,218 damage to a Taken Champion. Takes about 12 seconds to fire off 5 rockets with a lot of reload speed bonuses and a rocket ammo bonus, so 5 shots multiplied by the damage per shot divided by the amount of time to shoot those shots, and we end up with about 5,100 DPS. It's around 61,000 damage in about 12 seconds single target. Funnily enough, with no ammo bonuses and only having to reload once, we do about 49,000 damage in 8 seconds for a total of 6,100 DPS. So our DPS actually goes up by 1,000. This is because you only end up reloading one rocket into the chamber, which ends up being a DPS loss. However, it's still a net damage gain. It's kind of rare that you're firing rockets for single target damage, and there's a lot more to talk about there, but I'll save that all for another time. So the quick test shows that the sleeper, even at a lower attack, can be better single target damage than a rocket launcher. However, you'll need to fire the sleeper as fast as it can be fired, and you'll need to hit every single shot. Those DPS numbers just show the maximum amount of damage per second and damage possible. It'll be rare that you're actually doing that much damage. Obviously, the benefit of a rocket launcher is that it can hit multiple targets very easily, so multi-target DPS is going to favor the rocket launcher. I can tell you that there's probably no chance in hell that the sleeper simulant does more damage than an exotic sword, though, but swords are riskier to use, so it does make some sense. Once again, like I said when I originally covered the sleeper simulant, the ricochet on the blast is probably going to be useless. Ricochet rounds have never been good, and I don't see them ever being good unless they implement enemy-seeking ricochet rounds. If the laser actively tracked other targets in the area and maybe did slightly less damage per bounce to make up for it, 
then you might have something going for you. It definitely looks cool and all, but Oryx doesn't die because you put on a sweet laser light show. Although, come to think of it, I guess technically he does. You guys know what I mean. There's still plenty of messing around to do with the gun before we can come to any rock-solid conclusions. I don't want to lean one way or the other just yet, because it does show some promise, but nothing immediately says, this is the best heavy ever. A lot of people have been asking how it compares to G-Horn because of that Game Informer article named Making the Next G-Horn in Destiny or whatever it was. I think that the article was not exactly trying to compare damage numbers, but specifically the journey of making an exotic that will stand out for whatever reason. It wasn't supposed to be a literal damage comparison or anything like that. Other than that, yeah, thought the time gate was going to be a little while longer than that, didn't think the quest would end so abruptly, but overall I do think this was a very cool experience. Bungie had the entire community in a complete frenzy. We came together to tear this thing apart bit by bit, uncover the secrets. It was a very cool unifying moment for everyone involved. I hope we see more like it in the future. A lot of people are saying it was a bit too easy as well to get it all done, but not everyone is a super pro, and while I would have loved if it was incredibly hard, I know that there's plenty of people who appreciate that they didn't have to go flawless the raid or something like that to go get this weapon. The game is definitely aimed at casuals much more than it is at the hardcore, but that's another story for another time. Enjoy your sleeper simulants. I'm going to go simulate some sleep of my own. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.